What's up everybody, my name is Alex Zhang, welcome back to the channel, and today I've got the Canon EOS 1DX Mark III in the office. So I'll start by showing you guys what's inside the box and then giving you guys a first impressions of what I think about the camera from a video perspective. So what you get is the Canon strap, some manuals and the warranty forms. You also get a USB-C to USB-C cable. There's an eyepiece, the battery charger, along with the cord that comes with it, a single battery, and it comes with a little battery cap just in case you take the battery out. This is what you need in order to protect any sort of dust or debris getting inside the battery compartment. And then the beast, the camera itself, the Canon 1DX Mark III. Just right off the bat, since I've never owned or even held a 1DX Mark II before, God, this Mark III feels like an absolute tank. And here's a quick side-by-side -side comparison between the EOS R and the 1DX. And you can just see how massive this DSLR hybrid camera is compared to the mirrorless camera. One of my main concerns was the weight and overall size of the 1DX Mark III. And it is a big camera, but after holding it in person in my hands, it actually surprisingly doesn't feel as heavy as it should be, which is weird. Much of the camera is bottom heavy because of this battery that's sitting at the bottom right here. And I can already tell that it gives me smoother handheld footage than on my EOS R or even the 5D Mark IV. However, because the 1DX is just so massive, I can't imagine myself putting it on a gimbal and then going out and shooting for six or seven hours straight on a wedding shoot. I think my entire body would be completely dead at the end of the night. Another thing that I'm trying to get used to is just there's so many buttons on this camera. Look at that, like on the top right here, on the top right here, and then at the bottom right here and it does make it a little bit intimidating a little bit overwhelming at times but for videographers we only really need to know a few so obviously there is a shutter button which starts and stops your recording you can also do that with a start stop button on the photo and video switch the iso button is up here if you wanted to change the iso sensitivity the joystick and dial wheel are awesome if you want to quickly scrub through settings or video playback the mode button up here lets you choose what shooting mode you want. And then down here, you have the playback button. And that's pretty much it. That's all the buttons that you really need to know when you're shooting video on the 1DX Mark III. And moving on to the memory card slot, it's actually right here. And to open it up, you lift this little tab right here, and then you twist, and that will pop up the duo card slots that take CF Express. This camera can shoot 5.5K raw, but with my 120 gigabyte card, I'm only getting five minutes and 36 seconds of raw footage at 60 frames per second at 4K resolution. Now, because CF Express cards are super fast and new, they are also crazy expensive. Now, this 120 gigabyte card cost me $200. If you wanted a 256 gigabyte card, that costs $400. And if you want a 512 gigabyte card, that costs $600. That is another camera for $600. The price of a 512 gigabyte card, you could get another camera. Dual card slots are awesome and I totally understand the reasoning why you would want to have a backup file. But for me, I've personally never used a camera where I totally utilize the dual card slots. I've just never had that issue where I've had a faulty SD card crash on me, so I've never lost any footage at all. But for other videographers, it is nice to have that peace of mind. At the bottom right corner of the camera, you have the grip, and then you also have another set of buttons which you actually can turn off and on using this little switch right here. And that's mostly a photographer's thing unless you're shooting vertical video for TikTok, which I heard, is poppin', hey! But for the rest of us, we are mostly shooting video in landscape mode, which is the correct way to shoot video, not vertical. If you shoot vertical, we don't talk to you. Moving on to the other side, the battery pops up the same way. You lift this little tab, twist it, and then pull it out. Super easy, super simple. I've heard that these batteries last for days, which is awesome, and I can't wait to test that out. And then on the side right here, you have a lot of connections that you can plug right into the camera, but the important ones for videography would be the USB-C connection cable right here, and then you have the mini HDMI so that you can attach an external monitor and just record out from there. And on the other side, you have the mic and the headphone jack input so that you can record and monitor your audio levels. And then moving on to the touchscreen, it's really sharp 
sharp and responsive, but the biggest thing that I have an issue with it is that it just doesn't flip out. And if you're shooting anywhere that's not eye level, let's say you're up here or even down here, you're struggling to see what you're shooting and it can be hard if you don't have a flip out screen. Now in case you're shooting photos and videos with this camera, the 1DX Mark III actually separates the photo and video settings so that you don't have to go back and forth having to spend time and set up your camera entirely all over again so that you can just switch back and forth without any problems. And then as for the shooting modes and video codecs on the 1DX, I'm gonna save that for a separate video because there's a lot of things to go over from 5.5K RAW, 4K, 1080p, C-Log recording. There's a lot of stuff that I love about the camera, but then there are just things that are just so typical Canon when it comes to video specs. So make sure you're subscribed to get notified of when that video is dropping. Now you might've heard that there's no IBIS in the 1DX Mark III. There's only digital image stabilization, which is trash. Don't use it, it's terrible. I find that the 1DX is heavy enough for smooth handheld footage, and if you need anything else, any larger movements, then you can just use a gimbal. My biggest thing with the digital IS is that it crops into your image and it produces these micro jitters that are not very pleasing to the eye at all. It's like a very poor version of warp stabilization in Premiere Pro. So my recommendation is that you stay away from it. But that is it for this video. If there's anything that I missed about the camera or anything that you want me to cover, please leave it in the comment section down below. I hope you guys liked this video and if you did, please leave me a thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe, hit the bell to get notified of every video that I post. My name is Alex Chung and I'll see you later. Bye.